Right, so welcome to the first game of Memidans versus Germano. Uh, this is the semi-finals, therefore it will be a best of seven. Uh, first game on Sato, we have Germano playing Brazil versus Mimi playing uh, Colombia. Uh, Colombia is a pretty good choice on this map, and it has been quite a popular choice as well, since it is very, very low on food. Uh, but Colombia doesn't need to gather food from hunts, as the villagers trickle 25, 0.25 food per second which can be increased from the market upgrades. Uh, he's using build the rotator mod again, but at this point I don't really care. Right, the native is a Satanao town, so nothing too special. So, um, treasure-wise, what's happening? Okay. So getting into the abilities of each civilization, so Brazil is quite an interesting civilization as they can get villagers from coins. So they have a big button in the town center that can be infinitely used with an increasing cost that will give you five slaves, or slave trade. And the starting cost is 300 coin, and then it will increase to 390, 500, and so on and so forth. But it will get you five villagers and it does arrive at the speed of a big button, so it is a uh, very very fast way of getting five villages uh, so it is quite common for Brazil to transition uh, by gathering coin rather than other resources to get those five slaves and uh, just boost the recoil immensely however they do have a cap on slaves like the Ottomans which can be increased through the town halls using the town hall big buttons Otherwise, they also start with a Jesuit priest alongside the explorer, which is capable of building trade posts, churches, and town centers, and can also heal units, including your explorers. So Brazil is quite powerful at treasure hunting, uh, since he, they can heal up the explorer quite rapidly, and the Jesuit priest also has multipliers against treasure guardians, uh, therefore essentially two units fighting a treasure guardian at once. Uh, they also have an age one card that allows them to get additional two explorers. Let's give a look at the decks really quick. Uh, he doesn't have that card, but uh, lots of H three focus cards. Probably going for the Montalas and the Guard uh, Fast Fortress. They do have lots of crates upgrades and just two units at age two. Otherwise, and a quick look at Mermi's deck. Let's see what uh, what's happening here. Let's go moon. Right, so going in. Oh, I haven't seen this one actually. Improves by one native ally to accompany him. 2P War Chief, interesting. Never seen that before. Alright, so um, some interesting age 1 cards, uh, but we'll mostly be going for age 3 as well. Uh, going for the Independistas, very powerful range in infantry. Uh, looks like his focus is mostly on crates and upgrades. So both players will probably be meeting each other at H3 and we can see a giant mass of villagers coming in. Um, looks like he is in fact transitioning into coin as predicted to get the slave trades going. Uh, he has 19 villagers and is capped at 21. So 20 villagers at the moment at only 3 minutes and so while Mermion has 15 so he already has slave traded once probably going for a second one now to get the additional five slaves and the best thing about slave trade is even if you're slave capped so if you haven't used the big button in a town hall to increase your cap you can still get slaves from uh, the actual slave trade and even if you are at maximum settlers at say 99 uh, you can infinitely keep getting villages so in a treaty game it is actually possible to have 200 uh, slaves just 200 flat out slaves and then kill them all later on to switch into an army and have ridiculous amounts of eco. So um, Colombia is also interesting in that they get tents for population and they only cost 50 wood and they still give you the 10 pop. So compared to a normal 100 house cost, they get 20 pop essentially. And I'm not listening as streaming EO3. Let me check that really quick. Maxi changed my settings yesterday, so that's probably the issue. Let me 
me check. Yeah, I see. He changed the game. Maxi. All right, let's uh, edit that. Update. Good. Okay, now now it's changed. Good. Right, so Brazil also has an additional bonus of getting an agricultural wagon on each age up for free, which can then transform into mills or plantations, which is actually a great saver on wood. Uh, though no normal uh, AOE knowledge would tell you to not transition to mills, uh, because hunts gather way faster, Brazil actually cannot increase the hunt gather rates from the market, but from the mills instead, so it actually is better for Brazil. Which is also why Brazil only really needed the first hunt. Anyway, so the g game should be updated to Asian dynasties now. Just three priests going down, that's actually a big loss in my opinion. The just three priests can be really, really important. Gemino has already lost about two or three villages from these conscript raids, and he also has three Yaneros coming in, which might discover the settlers here or there. And honestly, they are pretty far from the town center, so I doubt they'll be able to escape if they're found. Conscript's about to find these three settlers now. Uh, these ones have survived, but might still be caught. I think that was going to be an outpost or a house, I'm not too sure, but uh, Slave's getting caught, one dies, the other two seems to be safe. We have Voluntarius coming now, they will be able to counter the conscripts, but the Aneros will essentially one-shot them, as they're quite weak units. Explorer able to tank, but will be going down quite fast, more conscripts at the bottom side here. So these villages have escaped and the stable has been built all the way in the back. Gemino successfully aging up to age 3, getting another agricultural wagon, uh, becoming another mill. So he has the pikemen, so he will be able to counter these Yanaros and uh, will be able to safely gather food, although his villages, yes, finally, he takes them out of the town center back to the mills. <coughs> Almost killing the Yanero. Oh, he does. Okay. He should not have brought her back, but is able to kill the Yaneros with the slaves. Looks like he's going behind them to actually snare it. Uh, but he has aged up with the Guardian run. So that was really, really tank unit with splash damage. Essentially like a Spahe from the Ottomans. Um, has to be a little careful with the Conscript hand attack bonus for... Yeah. I didn't ban you, Vivid. I honestly did not ban you. So the Machotero is now forcing the pikes will be going down. He has Castor Montados now, so um we'll be able to easily kite around with the base speed of eight. He will now need skirmishers to counter that, and looks like he will be walling up. Mimi does like his walls. He does have a tent barracks all the way here. He might want to siege that as soon as possible. Montalos have 24 siege, so that's pretty decent for a goon. Anyway, we do see... Another two Paisanos here, so let's see what he will be doing with those. Is able to successfully complete the wall, might lose the villagers if he doesn't react soon. Yes, he does save it just barely. And uh, we'll now be proceeding for the second wall, bringing Yaneros in. Uh, Montados are able to counter cavalry uh, despite 
not having the multiplier, but uh, they can easily kite thanks to the high speed. Uh, so normal cavalry is also no threat to the Montados. Vivid, I guess you got timed out by Nightbot or something. Not banned, but just time out. Simon Bolivar getting resurrected here. He now knows that Germano is gathering coin at the side, so we'll be getting these villages quite easily. Meanwhile, he is sieging the walls, uh, ignoring the tent barracks. He wants the villages instead, which is a fair, fair move. Those gay maps. <laughs> Yes, honestly, this is a bad map. All right, two Montanos popping out. Has to be really careful as they don't deal too much damage at the moment, as their numbers are low against the slightly, uh, well, I would say beefy, but they're not really. God of the Honors, those units are for sure are beefy though with the 650 HP, easily catching and killing the Yanaros off. If only he had the Jusri Priest. He would have been able to heal them up as well. Outpost is able to go up. Although the Montanos did a decent job. Oh, we got the brave Escopeteros now. So they are skirmish units with the times 3 multiplier against light cavalry. So Montanos are in trouble and we do have Independistas now. Uh, which are quite interesting as they... Not only are skirmishers, but they defeat light infantry and hand attack also counters cavalry. So pretty much overall unit. As you can see, Colombian elite heavy range infantry. So um, yeah, he has to be quite careful at fighting these units, uh, but also wants to kill them off as soon as possible before he manages to mass them up. Villagers join the fight. Uh, the honors are able to take down the Escapateros. But man, Independistas are tanky. With 320 HP, they're still alive and well, although the Escapateros have been lost. We also got a little... Oh, Germano is resigning. With the wall. Yeah, 